Hydration 10. An active ingredient in many stain removing products is the oxidising agent hydrogen peroxide. In an experiment to determine the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in a stain remover, there was a titration with acidified potassium, sorry, permanganate, it's probably going to be potassium. Um, so we've got our permanganate and our, um, our hydrogen peroxide, 2 to 5. 5 centimetres cubed of the stain remover, pipetted into a 100 ml standard flask made up. That's going to be important. There's a times 20 dilution. Uh, 20 centimetre cube samples are titrated against a uh, standard in the permanganate. Well, that's fine. We know we're going to have to do all the titration now. You've got initial, final and volume used um, for our titers. So this is our rough. So we'll get rid of that and we will know that our titer is going to be 18.55. OK, so I've already pretty much figured out what they're going to ask me to do. Right. Calculate the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide in 20 centimetres cubed of the diluted solution. And now when I work this, um, I did what I would normally do to do this, like I used my C1V1 over N1, which basically gave me um, the whole of the answer for the next one as well. So I'm going to run through how I would do this. Right, so we've got C1V1 over N1 is e sorry, equal to, not divided by, equal to C2V2 over N2. I know in the data book it has a little n. I hate the fact it's a little n because to me that sounds that looks like moles, as in moles mass formula mass. So I always put a big n so that I remember that it's the moles in the balanced equation that I'm looking at here. Okay, so we've got what I'm looking for is my hydrogen peroxide, and what I'm going to be able to work with is my permanganate. That is a five to two. Okay, so that's my n's. Right, so concentration of my uh, hydrogen peroxide multiplied by 20. Again, why I like this, because I don't have to shift this into um, litres because it's a, it's a ratio and 20 litres is the same as 20 um, centimetres cubed as far as that's concerned. And put a 5 uh, equal to and plug in the rest of them. So we've got 0 0.03, our volume, which we've already calculated, 18.55 and 2. OK, so just do this half of the equation first to get my uh, a little bit simpler. So that's 0 0.27825. OK, um, so that's all of that bit. And then I'm going to times it by 5 and divide it by 20 to get rid of all that and leave me just with C1. And that gives me 0 0.0695625 moles per litre to the minus 1. OK, so that's the concentration in the diluted sample. Right. So what I want to have and they were looking for the number of moles. So moles is just concentration times volume. So that times my point uh, zero two, making it um, your 20 centimetres cubed. So you get zero point zero zero one three nine one two five. So that's zero oh, one point four times 10 to the minus three. OK, now the reason I also really like how I'd gone about doing this was because on the next bit it says calculate the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in the undiluted stain remover. Well, I've got the concentration here in the diluted and I've already worked out that's times by 20. So I just do that times by 20, which gives me, well, 1.39125 or as they have it in the mark scheme, 1.4 more is per to the minus one. They'd accept this. This is fine. Um, yeah, so all of those four marks was basically me doing all of this at the side. But I don't actually think it was excessive amounts. If you were just going to work straight to this one, um, so just straight to here, uh, without going on to the concentration, then you could just do the first stage of it, which is to do the, just do the concentration times volume of the potassium permanganate. Sorry, just the permanganate. Um, do that and then do your ratio as 2 to 5 and that will give you this moles. OK. Um, right. Concentration of hydrogen peroxide is determined was less than the concentration stated. Possible source of error could be an in inaccurate concentration. How could they confirm the concentration? Right. So I think the, the best one is probably your calibration curve. OK. So what you could do is you could take a known set of concentrations that you have um, a calibration curve for. You then take your absorbance of your unknown, read it down, and it will give you the concentration. So that's one option. The other option is to do another titration, but to do the titration against a standard um, that you were absolutely certain of. Okay, so 
a standard constitution of anything that would react against the permanganate um, would be what you could use. Okay. Some of the molecules thought to be responsible for the colours of stain are shown. Use your knowledge of chemistry, so a three marker. Right, so I've done the same as I've done for other ones. I've pulled over the kind of section from the content statement that you're going to use for this one. Really, this is all about chromophores. Okay, so this is this is your first bit here would be to identify what we mean by a chromophore. So what we've got is our, our conjugated system of, oh, not there, double, single, double, single, double, single, this. And this is creating the system which will allow you to have your homo to lumo um, promotions. Um, and you've got a similar size system inside here. Uh, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, just going round like that. Okay, but you still have a similar kind of number of links. So what you then need to do, so you need to explain how, what this is, how this could actually work, why this is giving colour. And then you have to say, it says how the chemicals in a stain remover might work on these stains. So what they're going to do is they're going to break these conjugated systems. doesn't take much. I mean, all you would need to do if you took one of these double bonds and added into that double bond, removing it from the conjugate system, you get two shorter ones. And then the shorter one would change the wavelength that it could then absorb, which would change what we could see. Okay, you could bring in your colour wheel and explain why a colour is a colour. That, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, you're gonna ha that's how you're going to have to tackle that one. Um, it's probably nicer than some of the other three markers that I've seen. And that's our... That's us for this one.